addiction is a terrible thing. Many promising lives have been devoured by its all-consuming influence. It is a modern cyclops, a one-eyed monster that resides in our mind and guides our thoughts to terrible choices and often a more terrible end. The story of Odysseus and Cyclops Polyphemus may offer a glimpse into how such a terrible monster can be brought to heal. This is the gods are alive, eye of the Cyclops, the singular focus of addiction. The Cyclops are gigantic one-eyed monsters known for their tremendous strength. The most famous amongst them is Polyphemus, son of Poseidon, god of the sea. Polyphemus is known for his role in the story of the Greek hero Odysseus. Odysseus is king of Ithaca. He is perhaps best known for his Trojan horse, which caused the fall of Troy. Odysseus' greatest adventure, however, takes place on his return home from Troy. While sailing home to Ithaca, Odysseus and his men stop at an island to resupply their ship. The island is lush with greenery, framed with rolling hills and littered with sheep. Upon exploring the island further, they find a cave laden with fresh herbs and salted meats, barrels of wine and smoked fish. An Aladdin's cave, a wish list of everything and anything a hungry lost sailor could want for. Unbeknown to Odysseus and his men, this is the island of the man-eating cyclops Polyphemus, and the cave is Larder. Throughout the day, the men begin to ferry supplies to the ship. But as the sun begins to set, they hear what sounds like thunder. Yet the sky is clear. The ground beneath them shakes and the sailors' knees begin to tremble. As if bracing for an earthquake, they wait with bated breath until, casting their eyes to the horizon, they realize with horror that what they thought was a hill in the distance is the head of a giant. A giant with one eye. One mean, menacing eye looking directly at them. It is the Cyclops Polyphemus. The men know they must do something. But what? They see the sheep once grazing on the hills canter into the cave. Panicked, unsure of what to do, some of the sailors follow. Those that are stuck, frozen in fear, are swiftly grabbed by the terrible monster and devoured. Rushing into the cave, Odysseus and his men try to find hiding places before the monster Polyphemus arrives. It is in the middle of their silent prayers that a great shadow is cast over them. Frozen in fear, they hold their breath and internally prepare for the afterlife. But they are spared, for the moment at least, as Polyphemus rolls a giant stone over the cave entrance, shutting them and the sheep in darkness. Odysseus and his men are trapped. What's more, they have realized that the cave they found, the cave full of supplies, is a monster's food store, his larder. And unwittingly, they have become the recent addition to the monster's dinner menu, not unlike the sheep around them. Odysseus and his men keep their eyes open, waiting and praying for a way out. Night passes, and they hear a rumbling once again. A beam of light from the morning sun shines through the entrance as the stone is rolled away. As if on cue, the sheep line up and march out of the cave. Some of Odysseus' men, feeling a little braver seeing the sheep move out of the cave, step forward into the light. As they do, a giant eye meets their gaze, and a giant hand reaches out and grabs one. Polyphemus consumes the now screaming sailor whole. The men quickly return to their hiding places, hoping not to be seen, silently wondering what to do. As the cyclops starts to roll the stone back into place, Odysseus, 
begins to formulate a plan. As he is working through his plan, day turns to night and his thoughts are interrupted by the ground shaking and the stone at the entrance being moved back. Once more the men hide. Once again the giant's eye peers in through the entrance. Seeing nothing, Polyphemus grunts and once again the sheep mindlessly march into the cave and take their places and settle down. Polyphemus, whilst too big to go into the cave, decides another day and hunger will drive them out, and then he will eat very well. In the darkness, Odysseus lights a fire and gathers his men and tells them his plan. That night, the men take their daggers and shear the sheep of their fleeces. The following morning, when the Cyclops' thundering footsteps approach the cave, Odysseus' men return to their hiding places. The boulder is rolled to reveal the entrance once more, and the sheep, freshly shorn, stand shaking in the cool breeze, determined to remain in their warm beds. Polyphemus, puzzled that his sheep aren't marching out of the cave, grunts. He swipes his hand in the cave but finds nothing. He grunts some more. Then the Cyclops pushes his head into the entrance, and Odysseus steps forward. Polyphemus, surprised that a mortal would be so bold as to just stand there, grabs Odysseus and brings him close to his teeth, close to his giant eye. Polyphemus speaks. Who are you? And Odysseus replies, No one. What? Odysseus repeats his reply. No one. That is my name. No one. The Cyclops is very puzzled, and in his puzzlement, he brings Odysseus closer to his eye. No one. At that moment, Odysseus grabs his dagger and plunges it straight into the Cyclops' eye. Polyphemus wails in pain and drops Odysseus, who retreats back into the cave. He tells his men to take the wool they sheared, cover themselves in it and crawl out of the cave back to the ship. Polyphemus is blind and furious, wails and screams. Men and sheep cower as he does. As Polyphemus' pain subsides, he bends down on his huge hands and boulder-like knees and places a hand over the cave entrance. He waits. Meanwhile, Odysseus and his men, wearing fleeces where their armour was, go on their hands and knees and crawl out of the cave through the fingers of Polyphemus himself. Polyphemus is blinded and thus mistakes the fleeces for his own flock of sheep, not realising his flock are still inside the cave, freshly shorn and shivering, keeping away from the cold air. It is when they are far from blind Polyphemus, when his howls of anguish are echoes in the distance, that Odysseus gives the signal for his men to rise to their feet and run the rest of the way to the waiting ship. They quickly board and set sail as Polyphemus continues to wail and scream and howl in pain, in anguish, in agony. Poseidon, god of the sea, hears his son's cries and emerges from the ocean. He sees his son, blinded and in pain, and asks who did this to him. Polyphemus replies, No one, no one did this to me. The myth of the Cyclops continues to permeate our subconscious. The story of the one-eyed giant who lives on an island has been told and retold countless times. Whilst that monster may be mythical, the monsters in our minds are very real. Addiction is one such monster. A fiend that lives in the mind and with its one eye can see one thing and one thing only. It can be substances, it can be behaviour, it can be something as simple as food or video games. A powerful, hyper-focused monster in the mind of a person can have devastating impacts on that person and those around them. The toll this monster takes is insidious. It wrecks lives and the future of what those lives could be. 
it fractures relationships and denies the potential those relationships hold. It can turn a person into someone that can't even recognise themselves. It's difficult to know what to do when someone in our lives struggles and battles with addiction. And while this is not the place to prescribe treatment, it is worth remembering that Odysseus did not kill the Cyclops Polyphemus. He blinded him. It is possible in a similar way, instead of trying to slay the monsters in our minds, we can redirect its eye to something else, something healthier, more productive and more fulfilling. This is not said lightly. A person who falls victim to addiction is often someone in pain, and the road to redemption can be lonely and arduous. It may feel that life is mostly out of our hands. When we look for someone, like Polythemus, we find no one. There is still some light. The wisdom found in the serenity prayer used in most recovery programs reminds us of that. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. No matter how the monsters in our minds manifest, be it a factor of genetics or environment, the results of poor choices or bad company, there may not always be ways to defeat them or control them. However, redirection may be the most helpful. The story of Odysseus and Polyphemus reminds us that the strongest among us have long journeys ahead and on that journey can encounter monsters of all kinds. But it also tells us that the most powerful monsters can be outwitted, that the objects of obsession and addiction can be changed. Odysseus shows us that we don't need to slay our monsters, but change what the monster sees, focus on. It may be enough to shift the Cyclops' focus to something else, and in doing so, allow us to escape from caves of fear and darkness so that we may pursue the great adventure of our lives. This is The Gods Are Alive, where we explore myths and their modern equivalents, stories of gods old and new, and what truths they have. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps. Thank you.